On June 3, 2013, Edward Snowden arranges a clandestine meeting in Hong Kong, with documentarian Laura Poitras, and journalist Glenn Greenwald. He then takes them to his apartment, where they discuss releasing the classified information regarding illegal mass surveillance conducted by the National Security Agency NSA. After everything is ready, Snowden begins to share his life story. In 2004, Snowden undergoes basic training in Fort Benning, Georgia, after enlisting in the U.S. Army with the intention of matriculating to the Special Forces. One day, while jumping out of his bed, he accidentally breaks his leg. Because of that, the doctor informs him that he can no longer continue his training, and that he will be receiving an administrative discharge. Fortunately, the doctor says that he can still serve his country in other ways. Long story short, he decides to apply to the intelligence division at the CIA, and subsequently undergoes through the screening process. He is assessed by Deputy Director Corbin O'Brien, who is impressed by all of his answers. Seeing Snowden is highly intelligent, Corbin decides to take a chance on him, and eventually brings him to a CIA training center in Virginia called The Hill, where he is educated and tested on cyber warfare. Before entering his class, Snowden meets an instructor and counselor for the trainees, Hank Forrester, who is working on an encryption machine called Sigaba. In the first lesson, Snowden and his colleagues are each tasked with building a covert communications network in their hometown, deleting it, and then rebuilding it in eight hours or less. Normally, the average person completes the test in five hours, but later, Snowden impresses Corbin when he finishes the exercise in 38 minutes. Meanwhile, Snowden meets a woman named Lindsay Mills from a dating site. The two walk together in the park and grow closer, despite their stark contrasting political ideologies. In the next class, Snowden learns about the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which circumvents the Fourth Amendment rights of U.S. citizens by allowing warrant requests to be approved, by a panel of judges that were appointed by the Chief Justice. After that, he runs into Hank, who tells him that he used to be a prominent NSA operative. He managed to develop an algorithm for only $3 million which analyses 100 terabytes of data. Back in 2013, Snowden's apartment is suddenly visited by a senior journalist named Ewan McCaskill, who asks for evidence that Snowden is really a CIA agent. After showing all of his identities, Snowden emphasizes that he really wants to show that the NSA was doing illegal things to everyone, so he asks the media to back him up, but obviously there will be huge risks for them. He also gives the SD card that contains all the secret data to Ewan, and reveals a search interface called XKeyScore, which can track anyone using their personal data. Afterwards, Snowden continues his story when he acquires his first post abroad, working with diplomatic cover in Geneva in 2007. He takes Lindsay with him, and is assigned to maintain CIA's computer security network. However, his superior is later displeased to learn that Snowden hacked their own website. He reasons that he only wants to find vulnerabilities in their system, but his boss still puts a derog in his file. While destroying some disks, he meets Gabriel Soule, who has ample experience in electronic surveillance. He then takes him into his office, where Gabriel shows him the XKeyScore system. After logging in, he types in some keywords, and receives many messages in return. He then explains that this system works like Google, but also searches everyone's private data such as emails, chats, and text messages. Later, Snowden and Lindsay attend a high-profile lunch with an undercover CIA agent, who informs him that Corbin has given him permission to do field operations. His job is to spot potential targets for illegal activities. Because his social skills are so bad, Lindsay ends up helping him by setting him up with a banker named Marwan. With Gabriel's help, they find all of Marwan's personal data, including all of his family and everyone who has contacted with him. Gabriel begins to look for the mistakes he has made, but he turns out to be very clean with no shady connections. Therefore, Gabriel tries to check his family, until he finds Marwan's daughter, Salma. From her Facebook account, they learn that Salma's boyfriend is having an affair, and also that he is living in Geneva illegally with her Turkish mother. That night, Snowden and the CIA agent meet Marwan at the club, where he tells them that his daughter's boyfriend has been deported, and that his daughter took too many sleeping pills, but luckily she is now okay. After that, all of them leave the club while Marwan is heavily drunk. As a result, the CIA agent instructs Snowden to call the police to tell them that Marwan is driving drunk. After Marwan is imprisoned, the CIA agent's plans to make an offer that he cannot refuse, because he needs to be close to his family. Hearing this, Snowden refuses to do so, but, the CIA agent says that he will call the police himself. 
Snowden is eventually threatened by him, and he begins questioning the ethical implications of their assignment. The next day, he tapes every webcam while informing Lindsay that some Russian hackers might be watching them. He also says that he has resigned from the CIA due to personal differences. In 2009, Snowden takes a position with the NSA in Japan, working on a backup system called Epic Shelter. This program would allow the government to back up all critical data from the Middle East in an emergency. Later, he finally learns that the NSA has planted malware in different computers that manage Japan's government, infrastructure, and financial sectors, so they can just shut everything down when the country turns against the US. In addition, the practices of the NSA and other US government agencies are not only carried out in Japan, but also in most of the countries that are currently US allies, such as Germany, Brazil, Mexico, and Austria. Furthermore, they also spy on world and industry leaders, tracking their business deals and scandals to exert influence on the US in negotiations. With all of that, Snowden realizes this is actually about economic and political control, and that the NSA is only using terrorism as an excuse. Hence, the stress associated with his work in Japan results in the end of his relationship with Lindsay, who moves back with her family in Maryland. Three months later, Snowden has left his post with the NSA, and has returned to Maryland, where he and Lindsay get back together, and he takes up a position as a consultant for the CIA. Soon, Snowden goes hunting with Corbin who reveals an operation in Hawaii that revolves around counterattacking Chinese hackers. After that, Corbin introduces him to the deputy director of the NSA, Jim, who praises Snowden's work on Epic Shelter. As Corbin and Jim talk, Snowden learns that Epic Shelter is already being used to improve drone pilot response times, even though it was meant to be a backup program. However, Corbin still encourages him to take the job in Hawaii, saying that he would have even more access. At night, Snowden informs Lindsay of his new job offer, and says that he will follow whatever decision she makes. While going back to the kitchen, he suddenly collapses for some reason. After Snowden is diagnosed with epilepsy, Lindsay finally agrees that he should accept the job, as she believes the environment in Hawaii may be beneficial for his health. In 2012, Snowden arrives in Hawaii where he begins his job to counterattack on the Chinese. He also meets his old friend Gabriel, who has been working there for three years. They work in the tunnel, an underground World War II bunker that has been repurposed for massive electronic surveillance. Gabriel then takes him into his office, and introduces him to his new boss, Trevor James, and also Patrick Haynes, who will be working with him. Later, Snowden learns that Epic Shelter is actually providing real-time data that assists US drone pilots in launching lethal strikes against terror suspects in Pakistan. He also has another idea to create a centralized database for all the intelligence programs called Heartbeat. One day, he finds everyone in the office watching a live congressional meeting, where the subjects of government spying and data surveillance are addressed and covered up. Sometime later, Corbin appreciates him via video call, because he has tracked down 200 Chinese IPs in his first four months. On the other hand, it is revealed that Corbin has been monitoring Snowden's activity all along, and knows that Snowden is up to something. Therefore, he quickly returns home and instructs Lindsay to use an encrypted email. Moreover, he also suspects that their house may be bugged, so he advises her to go back to Maryland, but she ends up staying as it would look suspicious otherwise. The next morning, Snowden heads to the office with a Rubik's Cube. While everyone is busy with their job, he copies all the heartbeat data to a micro SD card. However, he accidentally drops it after he finishes loading all relevant data. Luckily, Patrick notices and quickly steps on it, so Trevor cannot see the card. As a result, Snowden thanks him in sign language, and tells him that they may never see each other again. Afterwards, he hides the micro SD card in the Rubik's Cube. While going through the security, Snowden tosses the Rubik's Cube to a guard before being scanned, so the guard just plays the Rubik's Cube unsuspectingly. With all the confidential in his hands, he contacts Laura and Glenn to schedule a meeting at the Mira Hotel in Hong Kong. Over the coming days, Snowden and the journalists slowly release information about government surveillance. The information is disseminated to the press on June 5, 2013, with additional leaks about Snowden published in the following days. In the aftermath, with the help of Yuan, Glenn, and Laura, Snowden is smuggled out of Hong Kong on a flight bound for Latin America by way of Russia. However, the US government revokes his passport, forcing him to remain in Moscow indefinitely. Meanwhile, the Russian government eventually grants him asylum for three years, with Lindsay joining him at a later date.
The movie ends with Snowden attending a teleconference and saying that he will continue his activism, no matter how risky it is. That was all from the video, I hope you like it, subscribe for more content like this, and hit like button to help us out.